and I move on. I, uh, next on my list is, I mean, representatives of the European Union, Mrs. Uh, Florica fink hoyer from the European Commission Humanitarian Aid and Civil Protection. You have the floor. Thank you, Chair. I have the honor to speak on behalf of the European Union. And the European Union is strongly committed to risk management and vulnerability reduction as critical components of poverty reduction and sustainable development strategies. Over the years, we have developed substantial experience in disaster risk management and set resilience building as a priority, both domestically and in our development in humanitarian aid work. The EU has recently revised its civil protection legislation with a very strong focus on preparedness and prevention policy and action. We are committed to the development of risk assessment and risk management capability assessments. We have also integrated risk management measures in a number of key EU policies and financial instruments. In development in humanitarian aid, we have reoriented our support to make resilience a priority in our work in all third countries most vulnerable to national disasters. The HFA1 has been instrumental in supporting global, regional and national efforts for disaster risk reduction. And we look forward to an ambitious post-2015 HIOGO framework placing disaster risk reduction as a key element of sustainable development efforts and agreeing on further steps to reduce risk and foster disaster resilience. At this stage, we would like to convey the following main observations to be reflected in the zero draft. Firstly, improving accountability and transparency should constitute a key principle of the new framework. We favor action-oriented targets supported by indicators. They should address the modalities of disaster resilience and encourage countries to put in place and effectively implement the necessary policies and institutions to reduce and, to the extent possible, avoid disaster risk. To improve governance and accountability, one very promising initiative that we have been supporting in Europe and which should be part of the new framework is the use of voluntary peer reviews to enhance the implementation of the framework. Secondly, all countries are vulnerable to disasters and the EU is not spared. Risk management policies are essential to ensure sustainable development and economic growth. The new framework should make the case for investment in disaster risk prevention as a strong driver for innovation, growth and job creation. All major infrastructure projects should be climate and disaster resilient. It should ensure that disaster risk reduction measures are systematically incorporated in economic and financial strategies in both the public and the private sectors. The framework should also encourage a more systematic and reinforced science policy interface, including foresight to address future risk and challenges. Thirdly, we should not forget that the poorest and marginalized are often the ones most exposed to disasters. The framework should therefore better target and empower the most in need and vulnerable harness the important potential of civil society and have a specific focus on the local and on level and on building resilience. Fourthly, in many cases, vulnerability is compounded by conflict, which tends to weaken the coping capacity of a country to provide adequate protection from disasters. Experience, however, shows that resilience building can and should be pursued also in fragile and conflict-affected areas. It has very positive effects and can help to strengthen coping capacities to address, for example, food and nutrition insecurity and epidemics. The new framework should factor in straight fragility and conflict and other forms of violence and fragility, as well as technological risk and everyday small local disasters 
and global shocks and stresses. Finally, the various global processes culminating in 2015 provide indeed a unique opportunity to address sustainable development, poverty reduction, climate change and disaster risk reduction in a coherent and mutually supportive way. Policies, goals and targets that are the subject of discussion in these fora should be coherent, mutually supportive and reinforcing. The last 10 years of the implementation of the Hyogo Framework for Action have contributed to a real shift in our approach with increased recognition that in order to make our economies more sustainable, we need to invest in disaster resilience. As we look to the future, getting risk management right has never been more urgent and more important, and we must factor risk both into our daily lives and long-term decisions. The European Union is determined to play an active role in designing a robust and ambitious post-2015 Yoga Framework for Action in full dialogue with our partners. Thank you very much. <laughs>